You happily sat at the front of the bus next to your husband. Shoto Aizawa. He seemed annoyed by the students yelling in the bus. Can I just get peace and quiet to nap? Aizawa sighed to himself. Can't you just enjoy this? I think the USJ is going to be fun and great for the students. You smiled at him. You're too optimistic, he sighed. Oh, we're almost there, you smiled. Yen, just please be careful. I don't want you getting hurt, he said quietly, blushing a bit. Aww, Shota, you smiled, kissing his cheek. Please refrain from doing that in front of my class, he said. You rolled your eyes. Fine. Oh, we're here. The bus stopped in front of the large dome. It still was amazing seeing it. Even though Aizawa and Yu had gone to check it out a few times before this, the students stepped out of the bus, following the two of you inside to, with th- to C-13. She began explaining to them what the USJ was. She was talking. You noticed that the lights around the, the dome flickered and turned off. 13 and the students began noticing. Shota? You looked over at him. He was beginning to put, oh, beginning to put on his hero costume goggles. Get back in, he said, pushing you towards the students. Nearly a hundred villains stepped out from the dark portals that spanned across the opposite side of the training ground. The main villain seemed to be a blue-haired guy in the middle with hands all over his body and one covering his face. Following him was a large creature. You've never seen anything like it before. Thirteen, Yin, evacuate the students. Kaminari, use your... Qu- device to contact the pros at school, Aizawa said. Then, he went to hold off the villains that were approaching the tall stairs up to the students. Come on, everyone. We need to go, you said, trying to get all the students quickly to the exit. The same purple portal appeared in front of everyone before you were able to approach the main entrance. Shit, you mumbled. You didn't know what happened to the students in the area since you were also separated with them. The portal took you to the middle of the main battle where Aizawa was. Shoto didn't look so good. It looked like the muscles around his elbow were exposed. The purple monster thing was approaching him. It looked like it was going to attack Shota. You wanted to stop it, but there was nothing you could do on your own. You found a bat on the ground, probably something one of the villains had dropped. You picked it up and swung it hard at its head. It broke on contact, and the monster turned to look at you. Its face was much more terrifying, looking at it up close. The creature punched you hard across the face. You fell to the ground, pain quickly spreading through your face, and you spit up some blood out. The Nomu grabbed you by the neck, choking you. You struggled, even though you knew it was pointless with how strong the creature was. Yin! You heard Shota yell. The monster dropped you on the ground, turning towards Shotoa. Then you hit the ground. You started coughing and gasping for air. You kept spitting up blood from the Nomu's punch. It was going to leave one nasty bruise. You looked up, seeing the Nomu attack him. He was bleeding a lot, and his arm looked very badly broken. (laughs) Shota, you exclaimed. When Shota has taken to the hospital, he stayed by his side the whole time. You were so worried about him. Luckily, it wasn't long before he woke up. He gently rubbed circles on his hand when he had gotten up. You jumped at the sound of him groaning. Shotoa, you're awake! You exclaimed, slightly grasping his hand. Ow, he said. You let go of his hand in surprise. Sorry! He tilted his head towards you, lifting the same hand up and caressing your cheek. You blushed and flinched slightly since he was touching the bruise on your cheek. Are you okay? He asked. His voice was a bit raspy and muffed from the bandages. Idiot, don't ask me if I'm okay. How are you? That that thing practically destroyed you, you exclaimed. I'm all right. You aren't hurt, right? He said. How many times do I have to tell you? Worry about yourself, all right? You smiled at him, gently placing your hand on top of his. I'll get, I'll get a nurse. They need to check on you and explain how your recovery should work. You said, I want to get out of here as soon as possible, he said. You didn't know how to respond, really. You wanted to tell him to take his time and to get better, but it was Shoto Aizawa you were talking about. 
work seems to seems to come before almost anything else in his mind, especially his own health. We'll take everything one step at a time, all right? I know that I said won't have much of an effect, but please take care of yourself, show. I don't want to be left alone one day, you know. He smiled, trying not to get emotional. Ian, come here, he said. He didn't hesitate to walk back over beside his bed. He leaned up, kissing you the best he could with the bandage over mostly all over his face. I'm not going to do that to you, but that also applies to you too. I know you're strong, but that creature could have also killed you. Don't go dying on me too. Shota, you're going to make me cry. Let's agree to look out for each other, all right? He said, slightly crying, standing back up. Okay, he said, letting you leave the room.